I'm the editor-in-chief and founder of Bushwick Daily, which is a website about a really cool neighborhood located in Bushwick, Brooklyn. Um, and some of you are probably asking yourself, like, what the hell is Bushwick? So, you know, it's the coolest place on earth, in case you didn't know. <laughs> New York Times said it already in 2006. And whether you believe it or not, Bushwick is pretty awesome. It is a very fascinating neighborhood. Uh, it has a very interesting history. It's been kind of rough in the past. We had a lot of drugs and gangs, but you know, there has been less of it in the, in the <laughs> present. And uh, it is a home to amazingly resilient community, which has survived all this hardship and is still in the neighborhood and is making it really awesome for all of us, as well as amazing flourishing artistic community. Bushwick is the destination for artists, musicians, and writers. So here comes Bushwick Daily. Bushwick Daily has been created in 2010. I came into the neighborhood and I was absolutely fascinated by what I found there. I was so compelled to document the, the, document the scene. I started the blog almost like a week after I came into the neighborhood. So I started to document the independent culture making. Um, until today, we are writing about what musicians you should be looking at, what art artists you should be following. Our huge polls are our weekend guides where we recommend the best music shows, parties, art shows, etc. So the website is doing pretty well in terms of traffic. We are reaching 55,000 unique visitors every month, which is pretty good for 100,000 uh, big neighborhood. Uh, with the combined social uh, base of 20,000 people, we can create some noise. So that's pretty awesome. And I bet that you guys are all thinking like, yeah, this is all pretty nice, but are these guys making money? Well, yes, we are. <laughs> so for almost a year, or actually a little bit over a year, we've been in plus. This is, in fact, my full-time job. I used to be a lawyer, but I quit that boring stuff, and you know, I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm already driving that BMW that I'm dreaming about, but I can pay my editors, you know, not, I'm not able to hire them, but I can pay them, as well as my CFO. Um, and now I would like to tell you how I make this money. So we have three revenue streams. Display ads, you all know them. I will talk about them and how they work on hyper-local level. Sponsored content. And you know, there's a word that needs to be said about printed publications for hyper-local sites. So we have started to create like this guide to um, arts festival that happens uh, every June in Bushwick. And you know, we were really amazed how much how much money were actually local advertisers like willing to pay to be featured in the print. So really local businesses are still pretty conservative and they love print. And you know, also our readers loved it. So, you know, there definitely is a stream to be explored. And, you know, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, like come and talk to me. I'll, I'd love to talk to you about that more. So we work almost exclusively with local businesses. We have a couple of bigger clients here and there. But really what we saw in Bushwick is like this extremely thriving local scene. And only in last year, there was like over 70 local bars and restaurants opening in Bushwick. So we are trying to target them, work with them, ask what their needs are and how we can really help them serve and, you know, reach our readers. So this is what we've learned when it comes to display ads. You may never say the word CPM to a local <laughs> advertiser because they will absolutely they won't get it. Like they will look at you like, what the hell are you talking about? So we really have opted for flat monthly prices that are affordable. Um, so a lot of these businesses are starting up. So, you know, they want to see like, how is it going to work out for them? So really our ads start at 125 per, per month. We do rotate them. Although I have to warn you, you guys have to have really open discussion with your clients so that they understand what are they getting into? When are they will be, when will they be featured on the site as well? Um, we feed, we, Build them monthly, which is a really good thing. That's a really good way how to avoid actually not getting paid by the businesses. Because <laughs> it's almost like you have to repitch it every month. Like, you remember that ad you bought with us? So it's time to pay. No, we build them monthly. Recurring payments, automatic. It's really great. So I would love to talk to you about like my absolute passion, the fourth revenue stream that I'm planning to add in June. So we are creating VIP section for, uh, for Bushwick Daily. Our readers will pay $2 or more per month. There won't be any, restriction, any restrictions as far as content goes, but they will get awesome local deals. 
So we have started to talk to our current advertisers and we are piloting this for, with them for free, so they won't be paying anything. How we, we, are, we opted for this mostly so that they are really encouraged to offer awesome, awesome stuff. Like for example, my favorite bar, the Rookery, they'll be giving away free whiskey for any Bushwick Daily subscribers. So, you know, it's stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every, but subscribers will come with friends, they'll likely drink another whiskey afterwards, so it is definitely worth it for them. So let's look at our readership basis and how do all these numbers come into play and how does it work, right? So actually our readership base, 60% of them are returning people. Actually, after I spoke with our readers conducting market research, most of them said that they come to the website every day. I love it. So. We're really hoping to convert, actually, don't, don't freak out, I'll, I'll totally walk you through this. We're actually hoping to, to convert 10 to 20% of our loyal readers to VIP members. And let me walk, let me walk you through like, our numbers a little bit here. So if, if only 3,300 of them subscribe for $2 per month, that is going to give us 6,600, 6, 6, which would actually be higher than what we're currently making with the website. So can you just imagine like our income would just double and this number will only grow because as our readership base grows and as, our, as we're offering better and better deals, this number will always grow. So this is something that I'm really excited about. We have been facing a little bit of a challenge how we actually make this all happen like we are living in the age of smartphone, like our readers, our millennials, they all are addicted to their smartphones. How do we make sure to deliver mobile coupons to their phone and that it's unique and all these questions, right? So I have been really researching this throughout town night and you know, our related time and actually we are able to make it happen. There are already startups like Woobox and you know, a, an app that you probably didn't have noticed on your, on your iPhone called Passbook where you can store your coupons. So it's really, it's possible and we can make it happen and launch in June. But as we're researching this, I came to, an, I came to a conclusion that actually this presents a huge opportunity. And um, we can actually make a product and streamline all this. We don't have to heavily curate local businesses actually the businesses can curate their own coupons and let the market do the job you know and also so that the readers can really easily download the coupons but and also this product would be perfect for other hyperlocal bloggers like me in order to make this happen i could use hundred thousand dollars <laughs> <laughs> so i'm obviously looking at investment money i think this is a scalable opportunity and i honestly think this is the next big thing for hyperlocal I'm absolutely excited to hear any good advice from you. And, um, you know, I really think that this can make a lot of hyperlocal bloggers happy who will double their income. All the readers will get awesome coupons and advertisers will get, will get actually measurable results. So I'd be happy to take any questions and, you know, follow me on Twitter. <laughs> so. So your proposal is to take the hyperlocal -lo coupon concept and scale it so that you can offer it to other hyperlocals? Is that what I'm getting? Absolutely. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Have you talked, do you have any technology um, people? Have you, um, should we just be talking to I have talked to, I've talked to several development companies, mm -hmm. you know, they have, given, they have given me quotes. You know, I've heard from many VCs that it's better to have a co technical co-founder on the board. So I'm definitely you know, seeing if I'll meet someone, <laughs> that would be awesome. But I, I can actually make it happen with just outsourcing the... Jeff and I know somebody who I oh think could gosh. help you. Amazing. <laughs> um, it's great. Um, and I think you, you ha congratulations on already having a sustainable business that you're... Thank you. That you're growing. <laughs> I think that's huge. And, and um, separate, you know, let's assume everything you get the connections and everything works as you plan and you take over the world of hyperlocal blogging with your <laughs> industry-wide solution. Um, in, in all honesty, you're, you know, you've done really well. You should capture how you did it, not just what you did. Because I mm -hmm. feel like there are best practices that you're, you can form that, can, that would be almost just as valuable as a mobile product to Absolutely. other uh, mobile bloggers. Because you know, it's one thing to say, I did X, Y, and Z. It's another thing to say, and here's how I did it. And I think that, that there's almost an industry-wide solution around the methodology and the actions you took 
I absolutely to hit, agree with you. Um, these revenue numbers. Yeah, and I wish I had more time, guys. I would like love to talk about it for hours. But like, yes, that's <laughs> what I want to create, like a community of hyperlocal bloggers who be sharing their skills and like, there's more to it. There's more to it. <laughs> so, um, so two quick ones. Um, one thing about getting people to pay, even at two dollars. Yes. Dare I say it? You could charge ten dollars, and you probably notice a negligible difference in numbers, because when people actually pay for stuff, they're not actually paying for the deals. They're paying for the status. They're paying to be part of your community. It's what why people pay for the New York Times, being blunt. It's not the mm -hmm. high quality journalism. It's more to do with the status mm -hmm. than anything else. Uh, I say this mm -hmm. having put up paywalls on, on large news sites myself. Um, the, uh, the, the next web and their pro model is actually a really good example to look at from a status point of view. Um, the only risk I would say about couponing is that it can quite often just simply be a way of getting loyal customers to save on their daily expenses, which is great if you're Target or CVS, um, but not so great if you're a local business. So you'll probably need to work out how you're going to get around that hurdle. I mean, don't get me wrong, the couponing business is like the, the oldest trick in the newspaper book. News Corp's News America is the most profitable bit of it, and that's what it does. It delivers coupons, not the Wall Street Journal. Um, so your model's there, but you're going to have to get around how to convince, particularly with local businesses, the coupons you provide are not just going to go to their regular customers. They're going to be driving new footfall. Did you talk to uh, Rick City about your loyalty? Yeah, we talk about Share. that stuff yeah. all the time. <laughs> but, you know, I think that, yes, but I would argue that you know, for example, in Bushwick, and I think generally in New York, people go to bars and restaurants almost as often as to CVS, if not more often. So it's almost like doing that, you know? Like, it is like, yeah, their daily expense. Oh, that, that's fine, but you've got to make sure you're clear with your advertiser that you're going to be helping them retain their... Is it retaining their regular customers, bringing new people? They need to mm -hmm. know what they're buying into, otherwise you're, what you sell them may be the wrong thing, and then you won't be able to get followers mm -hmm. sell over time. So. Yeah, thanks. Um... I just want to say I live in Bushwick and I am one of the people that I didn't even know that you were here and I do <laughs> use the, I go, I visit every weekend. Um, so there's that. Uh, also, much like Brick City, I would say that there's a significant opportunity for people outside Bushwick and that you could even upcharge, I, I hesitate to say, or do some, or do some uh, simultaneous marketing to acquire people that are either in Brooklyn or from Manhattan um, and have sort of two simultaneous, two simultaneous customer acquisition programs going um, for the local mm -hmm. businesses in Brooklyn. Yeah, thank you. Katarina, I just wanted to say that I love, love, loved the way that you had lots of facts and figures and projections in uh, your uh, presentation. And I think the fact that you did pointed up some of the deficits and some of the earlier ones, because I think that even though whether or not you can get the number of people that you think you can to sign up for the deal is kind of beside the point. In, in a way, what you're showing potential investors is that you've thought about the numbers, you've projected the numbers, and that it, you know it's an important exercise. So I, I, I applaud you for that. Thank you.